Hello, and welcome to my final project presentation on English Learn Multiphonics. My name is Zach Dolgan, and I'm excited to show you what we've found. To overview, not much has been written about English horn multiphonics. This research seeks to supplement that gap. To do so, we begin with a list containing seven multiphonics from composer Richard Feltziano's solo English piece, uh, English horn piece, Dark Landscape. We then systematically tested for multiphonics with adjacent fingerings to these seven adjacent, meaning a difference of at most one key. In total, we found about six clusters with similar color profiles or multiphonics with roughly similar partial compositions, including two adjacent clusters and some miscellaneous sounds. The numbers shown are those assigned to particular English horn fingerings. The access chart shows which multiphonic fingerings were found to be adjacent to each other with a difference of at most one key. These were found to be very easy to tremolo between. The next slide explains the notation that we use for English horn fingerings. All music notation in future slides will be in concert C treble clef. For this first multiphonic, the studio performer applied medium heavy pressure close to the thread, but not all the way to the thread, requiring air attack with some pressure. <laughs> For this pairing, the performer will toggle the B key. For this pairing, the performer will toggle the C key. The performer describes this multiphonic as very easy with almost no pressure. For this pairing, the performer will toggle the third key in the right hand. We categorize this as an adjacent multiphonic to the first fingering, which toggles the first key in the left hand. The performer describes this uh, multiphonic number six as very easy. This is an adjacent multiphonic to the fourth fingering, which toggles the left hand half hole. This is the first color profile we consider adjacent to color profile one. This fingering toggles between color profile one and its first adjacent via the right A flat key. The performer is able to affect beating on this multiphonic number eight. This fingering toggles between color profile one and its first adjacent using the left A flat key. The performer noted that multiphonic nine requires a pressure change. This is the second co color profile we consider adjacent to color profile one. This fingering toggles between color profile one and its second adjacent via the C key. This fingering resides in the second adjacent to color profile one exclusively. It has a very, very large dynamic range. This multiphonic is also very flexible with regards to controlling beating. The performer found it helpful to pull the reed out slightly for this effect. Multiphonic 12 can be achieved using either octave key. For this pairing, the performer will toggle the first key in the left hand.
This is the first multiphonic in color profile number two, described by the performer as fun and easy to achieve with medium pressure. The multiple tone profiles are there to represent the possible range, though all multiphonics possess pitch bending potential. This pairing, interestingly, doesn't toggle between partials, but partial volumes. The performer described Multiphonic 15 as causing a rattling sensation in his head, so my recommendation for composers is to use Multiphonic 15 sparingly and simply for the effect of contrasting with Multiphonic 14, which sounds the same pitch-wise anyway. For this Multiphonic, the performer will toggle the E-flat key. Now we begin moving into color profile three with a pair of transitions from profile two. The performer described multiphonic 17 as very easy. Multiphonic 18 requires left hand preparation. These next two reside exclusively in color profile number three. For this pairing, the performer will toggle the D flat key. For this pairing, the performer will toggle the second key in the right hand. Multiphonic 22 was found as an adjacent fingering to Multiphonic 18. These next three pairs are color profiles 4, 5, and 6. Multiphonic 23 requires high pressure, is challenging, and it's very possible to get beats. For this one, close down the reed and use a flexible non-wired reed to get closer to the thread. It is additionally challenging to perform loud. Uh, for this pairing, the performer will toggle the second and third keys in the right hand. This is the first fingering in color profile number five. For this beautiful pairing, the performer will toggle between the half hole and the first key in the left hand. For the last pairing comprising all of color profile six, the performer will toggle the B key. I want to thank Jesse Barrett for his incredible skill, fluency, and dedication to his instruments. He was also a pleasure to work with. Thank you to Francois Rose for teaching such a profoundly interesting class. Thank you to Dave Kerr for his wonderful camera work. Thanks to Katie Pieskala for manning the studio. And thank you, Hassan Ast uh, sorry, Astakrian, for making his 192 studio class uh, record our projects. Finally, thank you to Kevin Sue for donating your time for us to coordinate recordings together. Okay. Goodbye.